When the property market is booming, there comes a problem along with it. You get certain agents who are quick to cash in on the situation. They may be a little bit more shady. Here's a couple of things to really look out for. Hi, I'm Ryan Ong from Stacked Homes and thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to look at something that's quite important. Even though there is now much more regulation in the real estate industry in Singapore, you may find some property agents who may not exactly be doing the most ethical thing. And then of course there are some people who are just outright scammers. Because of the huge amounts of money involved in real estate, it's very important to look out for these things. So today we're going to look through a couple of typical or questionable practices that you really need to be aware of. For a more concise breakdown, by the way, you can visit the Stacked Homes editorial. Uh, on our blog, we have more details on how these practices take place and why they happen. Now, as a whole, Singapore's real estate scene is very much improved from decades ago. Some of our grandparents probably remember when rules were more like suggestions rather than laws. Today, the rise of CEA has weeded out most of the bad realtors. But even then, you do want to look out for some dodgy practices and some outright scams. Regulators can't be everywhere. Now, the first thing to look for, which uh, we've sort of seen in the past few years, is not really bad agents, but just scammers who are outright pretending to be property agents. These are people who give you a random text where they may tell you they've got a property on offer at a ridiculously low price and so forth. They may even have pictures just taken off the internet, of course. What these people like to do is they like to tell you to put down a deposit for something, such as a deposit to go and view a property. This is almost always a sign of a scam. There is no need to pay any kind of deposit to view a property and if you do transfer the so-called deposit to them they will ghost you after that. Just a quick warning, some of these people actually steal an existing agent's identity. Some of them even set up fake social media accounts using the agent's actual name and image. Of course agents do try and cope with this as and when they see it happen but in general just refuse to put down any deposits just for viewings. You get a lot more scammers trying to take advantage of desperate tenants and buyers alike. Second thing to look for is uh, rental deposits without any letter of intent or LOI. This is a potential rental scam here. The good face deposit for a rental should be accompanied by the letter of intent or the LOI which is sent to the landlord. There are no supporting documents of any kind. You just ask to transfer money for a deposit. That is something that you should be suspicious about. Also, any deposit for the landlord should be going straight to the landlord, not to the agent's personal account. Not even if those agents offer to handle the money for you, you shouldn't accept that. With regards to the rental, try to speak with the landlord if possible or current tenants as well. That's just to make sure that you're not dealing with some scammer who has hijacked a real listing and is pretending to rent it to you. Do note, by the way, that the LOI is not uh, prerequisite but if there is no LOI please have the tenancy agreement and everything written up to back everything up. The third problem are fake listings. Now uh, property portals have tried to crack down on these over the years. They have gotten better at it but it still does happen. This is when you see a property at an unusually low price right like a resale flat 300,000 in a desirable place like Bishan but when you call you'll be told, oh, this place has already been sold. And then you'll be given a sales pitch to go and view some other options nearby. This is really the real estate equivalent of clickbait. The initial listing, it probably never really existed at all, or at least it didn't really exist at that price, but the realtor just put it up anyway, just so they, they could get your call, and that way they have your contact, they can have an appointment, they can redirect you toward uh, another listing that they actually have. These things mainly are a bit of a nuisance and a time waster to you. Uh, there's a couple of ways to spot them, right? Look out for vague information or there being barely any write-up. Uh, another thing to do is you can copy that picture, paste it into Google image search. You'll probably see if it's been used before in previous listings. And of course, the price tends to be unrealistically low. That's bait for you. Do be wary of identity theft. Sometimes you click on these listings, uh, they take you somewhere else, you get a phone call and you get asked a bunch of 
personal questions, questions about your personal information and so forth. Please do be very careful about this. There is an Alliance for Action AFA on accurate property listings. This has been set up to combat the issue of fake listings. There is a proposal that each property will have a unique serial number implemented before it's listed. Although that is being discussed and kind of being put in the works right now, it's not out there yet. The fourth thing to watch for if you are a seller is when you are not informed of an offer being made by a buyer. Now, why would a property agent want to keep quiet about a certain offer that's been made? Well, it could come down to the issue of higher commissions. To be clear, it is mandatory for your agent, the seller's agent, to inform you of all the offers being made. But we do hear sometimes of shady agents who just ignore or refuse to respond to text from a buyer's agent. That's because for private property sales for most of them, what happens is you as a seller pay a commission of 2%, a negotiable amount. That amount is split, could be evenly or unevenly, between the buyer's agent and the seller's agent. In today's market, because the property market is very hot, the seller's agent likely has the upper hand. They may get a bigger portion of those commissions. Some seller's agents, however, they get a little bit greedy and they want the full commission for themselves. They don't want any part of it going to a buyer's agent. Because of that, they ignore phone calls that are coming from buyer's agents, and this could actually cause you to lose out on potential offers. A buyer's agent, by the way, can sometimes know when this is happening. Sometimes when they text from a different number, they call from a different number, they can suddenly get a response from the seller's agent. For sellers, you may want to do some due diligence on this. If you find Strangely enough that uh, no one seems to be making offers and such, just do a quick double check. You could do some good old on the ground research, right? If your condo has a healthy volume of sale transactions, spot viewings that happen over the weekends, you might notice that the buyers that come in may only do with no accompanying buyer's agent, for example. And it's always the same seller agent every time if you're on the buyer's side. This could be it's one of the agents that shun co-broking deals. Stay wary of this, yeah. Now the fifth issue, this is when a real estate agent gives the buyer a portion of their commissions to just kind of hurry up and close the sale or to sweeten the deal. These are often disguised under other names. Uh, of course, they won't directly call it like a kickback. They might call it you know, referral fees or other such names. This practice was most prevalent in the aftermath of 2018. We saw that quite often back then. It was a way to alleviate the uh, rising stamp duty for some buyers. Now, note that it is illegal for an agent to do this, but it is very difficult to catch some agents. Truth to be told, some buyers are in on it as well. There are even property buyers who deliberately look out uh, for agents who are willing to cut this kind of deal with them. You need to be very, very wary of any realtor that proposes deals like this. It may seem great to you on the surface, but keep in mind that they are doing something illegal and they are involving you. You want to be careful if the agent is the one who initiated just to close the deal over other uh, competing agents because all of this is also a reflection on character and you may be dealing with the kind of person who's in it just for a quick buck. The next thing to look out for are those text messages that tell you, hey, I have a buyer or a tenant ready to transact right now. This is a little bit of a bait and switch tactic to get you as a seller to engage them because the rationale here is why would you continue with your current real estate agent when this person texting you claims they already have a ready buyer or tenant right now. If you are a seller who is using a DIY route, this is a way to convince you that it's faster just to engage them instead because they've got someone waiting already. Quite often, the buyer or tenant that they claim to have is fake. It's just a story. Once you've taken on the agent, the agent will say, oh, that so-called buyer or tenant that I said I had, they have decided to buy another property or they had family issues, they're backing out of it. We've even heard of those who have an accomplice masquerading as an interested buyer or tenant just for a short while before making up an excuse to pull out. An easy way to avoid all this is just to register yourself on the DNC list under the PDPA Act. This will pretty much put an end to it. Now, the next trick to look for is when the agent comes and tells you that your property is worth a lot more than you're currently listing it for. 
Now, again, this is another tactic to try and get you as a seller to engage them. This is often done through selective presentation of information. If you look closely, uh, some of these examples are quite inappropriate. The transactions are real, but you might find, for example, that they're showing you the price of a unit on the 30th floor when we're really talking about your 10th floor unit here. There are URA transaction records. These are open to the public. We suggest you check there to discover the plausibility of what the agent is actually claiming. You can also go out and get quotes from multiple agents. Also, just approach your uh, mortgage banker, do a valuation of your property to really be sure there. Likewise, on the flip side, do be aware that this trick can be used to convince you to buy. For example, selective presentation of uh, transactions to try and convince you that the property you're viewing is cheap uh, in comparison. One trick is to tell you the average price when the average has already been rendered useless by an outlier. To explain how this works, say we have 10 units in the development, of which 9 units sold for 1 million, but one unit was an outlier is for 1.5 million. If you check the, the average, the average price among the 10 units is now in fact 1.05 million. The answer to your question, what's the average price, can actually be $50,000 higher than what 9 out of the 10 buyers paid and it wouldn't technically be a lie. In another example, let's say the last few units were sold at 1 million but then the very last unit was sold at 900,000 and the seller's agent keeps fixating on that fact to get you to lower your price to sell it quicker. You may want to consider doing your own due diligence to find out why that specific unit was sold at 900,000. It, it might not be like yours, it might be facing the communal dump, uh, it may have been an urgent sale because the seller had an ABSD deadline for example. There are still some out there who do uh, try these methods. Given the huge amounts involved in property transactions, really it, you should be extra careful about the realtor that you engage. If you're not certain about all these, uh, do give us a shout out at Stacked Homes, we can help you out. If you have any questions about this, you have any suspicions about transaction that you're dealing with, uh, do post it in the comments below and let us know about it. Also tell us more about uh, what you'd like to hear about next. We would greatly appreciate if you would follow and subscribe. That also allows us to give you notifications when we put out new content for you. Once again, I'm Ryan Ong from Stacked Homes. Uh, thanks for joining me here today. Thank you.